Clark. 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 You've got to get up, you've got to get your breakfast, and you've got to get to school in a half an hour. It's the second week of summer school, and the boys are waking up to a hearty breakfast. Do you know what he's had for breakfast this morning? Two bars of chocolate. He had a whisper and a dairy milk. No, it's no effect on him. It keeps him awake. School starts at nine, but Clark is in no hurry. You got out of bed? Well, I told you to get out of bed, Clark. Gee, you would have had plenty of time to basically have your breakfast, well, right? Enough. But unfortunately, you didn't get out of bed, right? Cos you were nappering to Dad till God I was at the morning. At least I napped to Dad about good things instead of things like Coronation Street. Don't attack that tone of voice for me. Excuse me, young person, come here. Mr Drew first came to the nation's attention on educating Essex. Having families on site gives him unprecedented access to the boys' lives and clues as to what might be causing their extreme behaviour. What we're trying to do here is a seriously hard thing. We're taking a group of young people and families who at the moment are sitting in situations where things don't work in their lives. And we're not trying to change everything overnight, but we're trying to enable them to go back to their schools and their lives and do better. Mr Drew's ambition is to show that what happens at home comes to school, so parenting classes are compulsory. I don't believe that we have the right to command anything from children that we don't model. Creating a distraction. He's brought in behaviour expert Tracy Campbell to help the parents see where they've been going wrong. It isn't sufficient to just tell children what to do, we have to show them what to do. The teachers have been handpicked for their ability to deal with challenging boys. English is with Mr Grist. I'm going to give you three words. I want you to find the page numbers for those words. You have five minutes. Your time starts now. Science with Mr Vidler. <laughs> PE with Mr Volante. First part person, please. And this morning, maths with Miss Skinner. OK, I need eyes on me, please. Thank you very much. Mr Drew has opted for a policy of positive reinforcement and a point system is underway. If I call for your attention, so I put my hand in the air, and you fold your arms like that, and you look smart and ready, you'll get a point for your table. If you've done well, tonight, you get to go in the games room. Right, I am going to do a little task with you, but I need someone who's really good at multiplication. So, so put your hand up if you think that you are proper, proper confident. Tom, you're going to be my lead learner. Right, for you, Tom. One week into summer school, Mr Drew now has a clear sense of where each family's problems lie and it's time to start tackling them head on. Come in, Dom, sit down. Swearing has been an issue across the board and ten-year-old Dominic is one of the worst offenders. One time I got sent out of school because uh -huh. I accidentally called my teacher and... When you say accidentally, how is it accidentally? Back home in Sussex, Dominic lives with his mum, Lucy. You think that looks nice? It's a potato, Dominic. I've never taught him to be like this. He's done this himself. Oh, f now! You're f wind up. Can you just let me off? You're not going out. Oh, you know what? I don't f care anymore. I swear only when I'm angry. God's sake, this is f isn't yeah. it? Shit. You're yeah. You're He's choosing what path to take and he's not picking the right path. I need Dominic to know what he's doing is wrong. Luckily for Lucy, Mr Drew has a plan to achieve just that. Starting with the way Dominic speaks to her, it's playback time. No, not that one. Not that one. No. No, Snake! There's loads of room. Do you tell us? Shocked. You watching that, how do you feel about yourself? Very shocked. Why are you shocked? You did it. So why are you shocked? I didn't know I was that bad doing that. 
What do you think other people would think if they saw you speaking to your mum like that? Uh, they won't, won't want me in the same place as them. So... And so I'm just really upset and angry about myself for doing that. So why do you do it to me, then? Because sometimes you get me a little bit too angry and sometimes you won't let me. I just want to release my anger, full blast. OK, can I just step in at that point? No. No. Not good enough. That's not good enough, young man. I don't care how annoyed you are. I don't care how upset you are. I don't care how much you think Mum's out of order. You do not speak to your mum like that. Full stop. People like you, Dom. They look at you and they think, I like that Dom. He's a good lad. But... We don't like that version. So you're saying I have to change that? You have to stop that. So that what we get is the good Dom, who has a little wobble every once in a while, but treats his mum with the respect she's entitled to. Sorry, Mum. I will never, ever, ever do that again. OK. I don't have anything else to add, Dom. I think you get the point. As far as I'm concerned, we are done. It's morning break and snack time for the boys. You want to eat these as well as all your raisins? Mm. You like these? No. Mr Drew has banned fizzy drinks, crisps and sweets at break time. But the school's healthy options aren't to everyone's liking. I'm getting out! And some of the boys decide to take matters into their own hands. Go get a packet of crisps for Go get for me! The accommodation blocks are off limits during school hours. I need a word with you because you're being bang out of order at the minute. Come on. But the boys are intent on breaking in to feast on the family's private supplies of chocolate and crisps. Why can't you just open the frigging door and they'll see? I'm going to get a key. We're going to get one. Hello, come in, though. We're going to have to be really firm with them on this now because they need to understand that this behaviour is not something that will be tolerated. Oh, Mr. Drew arrives right on cue. Mr. Grace, can we take them to the assembly hall, please, sir? See you in the assembly hall, Aston. Thank you. I think it's like a bit of See you in the assembly hall, Aston. I think it's Thank like you. A bit of I'm going somewhere else. I'm not going to the assembly hall. Bye. Bye. Despite his bravado, Aston soon joins the other boys in the assembly hall. Mr. Grist, Ms. Skinner, Mr. Vidler, you were present at break time. Which of these young men are able to go off due to the fact that they made the right decisions? Dylan. Dylan was regularly making the right decision. Dylan, please go and step outside the door and stand in the corridor and wait for Miss Skinner. Brought them all together in the assembly hall because it's important to be able to tackle issues when they arise. But what you always find is actually most of the boys don't need to be there. So we're able to send most of them away and we were left primarily with Aston and with Clark. We've got Joe and Jake and Max C. Right, say all the things that you feel the need to say and then I'll speak. They don't find us! Properly. <laughs> that done. 12-year-old Aston lives in South Wales with Dad Mark, oh. Mum Fiona, a mature student, and twin brother Dylan. <laughs> the boys' behaviour in general I would describe as a roller coaster. When they're good, they're very, very good, but when they're bad, they're wicked. <gasps> Aston! Aston at his worst is vile language. Oh my gosh. Words that would make your ears bleed. Both twins were excluded from their primary school. They were accepted into a mainstream secondary last year, but since then they've both been excluded again on a number of occasions. I was excluded before for fighting in the classroom with his boy. He went to punch me, so I ducked and then just punched him and whacked his head against the wall. I'm allowed to play! The teachers don't feel that they can cope. Verbal aggression towards staff, hitting, fighting others and screaming. I don't really care if I get permanently excluded. Maybe that's people's fault for winding me up. 
all the stuff we've talked about, about doing the right thing, about behaving right, about accepting things, it just all goes out the window and we go back to square one, do we? Because that's what's now happened this morning. At this moment in time, your behaviour is so outrageous that when we get to reward this evening, you will not take part. You can't behave in the way that you've behaved and expect me to reward you. You can't. Three of the boys accept their fate and head back to class. Jake, the same place. Which leaves Aston and Clark. Clark. Aston and Clark want a reaction. They want a shouting match, and I'm not going to give it to them. The behaviour of those two boys has gone beyond something that can be contained, and that takes a bit further. With no sign of an end to the standoff, Mr Drew decides to try a different tack. We'll wait for your mum to arrive, shall we? And summons the boy's parents. Of all the people who I'm most gutted and cross with at this moment in time, you're top of my list. So do you know what? However upset and cross you might be, I'm talking to Aston at the moment, Clark. It would be nice if you could give people some time on their own. Clark, it's not your time at the moment, it's Aston's. I think I'll have my time now. No, Clark, when it's your time, it'll be after we finish I with don't want to talk by myself. Because I know that's just going to end up by me punching someone's face. At the moment, Clark, it's Aston's time. Thank you, Clark. Could you, Clark, just leave? Uh... How have we ended up here? I'm just hungry. And therefore, that means that everyone else has to be on the receiving end. Yes. Of... Aston, I know you're not happy with this situation. And I'll take your silence as agreement. You could have handled it very differently. You could have handled it very, very differently. Can I suggest Aston to walk off with Mum for a period of time yeah. so we can start the day again? One down, one to go. Mr Drew heads off in search of Clark. Could you just leave me alone? Quite nice, Clark. We can just go back inside, really. You... Don't you? You can stand there all you like. You're just not cooperating, Clark. I'm just not bothered. And I'm going to keep on refusing. Then I can go back and teach the other children who do want to learn, who want to take part. And you can miss out, unfortunately. Like an estimated 5% of children in mainstream education, Clark has ADHD. At home on Wearside, he has a stormy relationship with Mum, Helen. Might be crap, I don't know. You give me... Clark! Not funny! I love Clark to bits, didn't get it wrong, but I think... I, what I find is, is that I've got a very short fuse. Very short fuse. Pack it in! You in! She doesn't really have any other way but approach it with by shouting and bawling at him. Clark! What on earth is that? Since arriving at summer school, parenting classes have provided Helen with some new strategies and food for thought. What should happen when someone shouts, we should stand to attention. We should be going, whoa, what's happened? But if they're hearing that all the time, it's a response to the behaviour on a daily basis, you may as well be whispering. But after Clark's latest outburst, can Helen put the lessons she's learned into practice? Clark, talk to Mum about why you're kicking off. You're hungry. Is that right? Now, do you think it is, was appropriate? No, Clark. I want full focus on me, please. Do you think it was appropriate to tell a member of staff that you wanted to smash her face in? No. Do you think it was appropriate to kick off the way you have kicked off? Stop picking your nose, please. Mm. Kick off the way you have kicked off because of... You're just hungry. Yes or no? No, no, this is a one answer. Yes or no? At your own school, do you think that you would have gotten food at this precise moment? <laughs> Helen's made her point, but has the softly, softly approach worked? 
Hello. Hello. Right, what do you have to say? Sorry, Mr. Drew, for the things I've been doing. You are sucking my will to live out of me at the moment. I stood in the pouring rain out there having a conversation with you. That is a sign of how much I want you to do well and how much I want you to improve. Yes? If I didn't care, would I stand in the pouring rain? Mm -hmm. no. 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 What do you have to do tomorrow? Work hard. Work hard and be... Sorry. Polite. Be good. Good. Well done for coming in with Mum and well done for listening to Mum and Dad, OK? Helen brought him back in, actually made him apologise, and I thought it was really important to empower her and let her see that if she does work with dealing with things and doesn't get all cross about it, that there is a positive outcome. And Clark realised that he needed to work with his mum in order for things to be good. Give me a kiss, please, and you're going to have better behaviour this afternoon. That's definitely progress for me, because I would have literally lashed out. I would have probably rose, rose my voice, and then there would have been me and him at loggerheads. But I haven't. I've kept my calm voice, I've kept me, me cool. It took a while, but he said sorry and, and everything else, so I'm proud of that, very proud of that. So it's on the right steps. Things are looking up, for one family at least. But Mr Drew wants to improve relationships between all the boys and their parents. We are going to write ten questions. We need to write sensible questions that our parents are likely to know the answers to. This afternoon he's arranged a quiz where the boys will be questioning their parents on their own specialist subject. Right, so there your questions. Themselves. You might ask your parents what your favourite food is. You could ask them what you hope to be when you're older, what your dreams are. You could ask them anything of that type that is reasonable. What score did I get in maths last time? I think sometimes the boys probably think their parents don't know much about them and what they get up to because their relationships can be quite strained on a daily basis. This family quiz is going to offer them a real positive bonding activity for these boys and their parents to work on. So, without any further ado, Dom? Question one for Mum, please. Uh, what is my favourite toy, Mum? Uh, Bowblade. Correct. <laughs> Max, I think it's you next. Am I a pain? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well done. Clark. What's my favourite sport? I'm going to have to hurry you. Uh... Cycling. There you go, take your seat. Okay, here we go. Have I fallen out a tree? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Oh, you no, are good. Fiona, please come and collect your winner's trophy. Yay! Yay! I'd like to thank my mum and my dad. <laughs> and <laughs> The parents' quiz session this afternoon, I, I envisaged disaster, if I'm honest. When we got to break and then I had to follow Clark outside, I, I sensed it wasn't going to work. But actually, it was lovely. It was really nice and they did know a lot about their sons and their sons liked the fact they did. That was good. It was good. They may have ended on a high, but Mr Drew has an unwelcome reminder for some of the boys. Really nice end to the day, boys. You know that we talked about the fact that obviously rewards get earned when we do the right thing and it is a result of all the things we do during the day. Some of us did a lot more successfully than others. So, we are going off to the games room for the reward, but, as I explained to a number of you during the day, due to the fact that you didn't get everything right to begin with, your time in the games room isn't as big as those who have got it right all day. So, you three can go off with Mr Vidler now to the games room, and other people will join you relatively shortly. So go and sit on your chair. If you do that, you will not have it don't now spoil it. Of course the boys are going to moan and shout when they have their reward time taken away. I'd expect nothing less. But the sooner they can understand a link between their actions and the consequences, the better off we're all going to be and the faster we can make progress together. 15 minutes! I'm getting out! Yesterday's break time saw the boys rebel against the healthy snacks on offer. These like a bit of At morning assembly, Mr Drew has an uncompromising message for the families. That was deeply unpleasant yesterday at break time. Deeply unpleasant. And do you know what gets me? It was wrong. I'm not going to stick chocolate bars and crisps and other things onto your break time food. And I'm going to be really clear about that. That's not appropriate, sensible food for you to eat at break time. Mr Drew seems to have ruffled some feathers. 
Max sees mum Ruth isn't happy. Um, I mean, I get any questions? Um, at some point today, I'd like to see you. Okay. Please, in That's private. Absolutely fine. Um, then we're done. Great. Thank you, everyone. <sighs> absolutely pissed off. I'm just cross. Really, really pissed off. While the boys go to lessons, Ruth heads straight for Mr. Drew's office. OK, I have a bit of a problem okay. with the food issue. Now, Max doesn't eat fruit, veg or salad. However wrong that is, he doesn't eat them. Um, I don't have no sense of smell and things right. taste different to me to as they do you mm -hmm. and feel different mm -hmm. to me in my mouth as they do to you. Mm -hmm. I have pushed peas and broccoli and carrots around my plate to encourage my children to eat them, but they don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm worrying that he's not eating the things at break time. Does he eat, he's um... only having a sandwich. Okay. He can't even have a packet of crisps with his sandwich. I have to make sure that my son, no, no, no. you know, is eating the things that he is used to eating. How about we do a trip to the shop in the village with him and you go around the shop and actually we find what would be a sensible set. I'm sure with a walk round we can find something in there and we yep. can make it work. Okay, thank, thank you very thank much. You very have a good much, time. Mr. Mr. Drew isn't just cracking down on the boys' eating habits. Next on the hit list is their love of fizzy drinks. As well as having these at home, the boys have been raiding the college canteen, which is supposed to be out of bounds. The only reason I got up with you is to fill these two up with Pepsi. I'm, drink I'm drinking Pepsi and 7-Up. What's the good of getting another Pepsi? Or a Coke? I don't know. Mr. Drew knows he has to get the parents on side. So he's our science teacher, Mr. Fiddler, to run an experiment, measuring the effect a caffeinated fizzy drink has on their pulse rate. Was there a difference in your pulse? What did you find? I went from 12 to 20. 12 to 20. Mine's well, gone from 17 to 22. 17, 22. With small people, a small change can make quite a big difference. And the small change that it makes in my classes when you see this is that the noise level will go up and the amount of engagement will go down. Zane's diet overall is really rather healthy. He's a proper little rabbit. On the alternative, we, let him we do let him have fizz, but it's the full max ones or stuff like that because that gives him the energy that he's got, that his fruit and veg aren't giving him. I'm certainly going to have a conversation about accessibility to the canteen and ensuring that that is something that we're very tight on. But it's, it's very much about us working in partnership, ensuring that the children are not then getting, you know, a kind of sneaky Coke from, from mum or dad. I'm not going to stop me giving him Coke. Giving I, don't him. I mean, I still, I still, he still have his Coke. It's, it says on the bottle, diet free, cabin free. Most mornings he's like in slow mode, don't want to go, yeah, you know, sort of thing, whatever. He's had a Coke or an energy, or I know, shouldn't give him any drinks, but he's had a bit of an energy drink, or he's had a sip of my energy drink, because I drink them. Hands up, I don't care. And uh, he's off. Whoosh. Zane's day may have started with a whoosh, but just along the corridor, despite his morning glass of fizz, he's feeling a little flat. Zane, sit up. Zane, it's about three times you've made me stop. I do absolutely believe that all parents want the best for their child. And actually, I don't believe that anyone is not prepared to look at what they do and change the way that they behave. But people naturally respond often negatively when difficult messages are delivered to people. Mr Drew's line on fizzy drinks may be meeting with resistance, but one family is prepared to try something new, within reason. I don't want to try olives because I hate olives. Have you tried them? PE teacher Dominic Valente has been set the challenge of re-educating Max and Ruth's taste buds. No, no that's, that's a free, chocolate sundae. It is uh, absolutely gorgeous. I don't like really. cherries. We, but you, you don't know them? because you haven't have. tried them. You have not tried them. I have on that cake. Back home in Norfolk, Max wears his naughtiness as a badge of honour. I'm quite naughty at school and at home I'm just a pain. Max's behaviour is erratic. Sometimes he's good, sometimes he's really, really naughty and I just don't understand 
like the two different people that he becomes. <laughs> Ruth is so embarrassed by Max's behaviour that she sends his sister in to collect him from school. I have a force that tells me to be naughty. I can never stop that force. It's too powerful. I do end up in tears quite a lot. I feel like I've done 10 rounds with Mike Tyson and just, you know, it just wears me out. I'm obviously not doing something right for him to behave the way he does. That's like what Mummy has for breakfast. Oh, no, but I want the chocolate ones. But you can't have the chocolate ones. It's got to be healthy. Do you like strawberries? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what, then, we'll do is we'll get these strawberries and we'll give them a go. Are you them? Like yeah. It's time for Ruth and Max to take a leap into the unknown. I'm going to reveal the first piece of fruit. <laughs> we have... Grape. Is that his bottle? No, Max, please don't spoil this for me. Ready? Ready to go? Go for your grape challenge. Come on then. Three, two, one. I want to see it. all of that eaten. On a scale of 1 to 10, 0 being the worst fruit you've ever tasted where are you with that one? I think I'll put... 7. I think I'd put that, yeah, as a 7. And we're going for chunks of pineapple. Come on, you can do it. And swallow. Ruth, scale of 1 to 10. That's a 1. 1,000. Yeah, so pineapples is something that you really, really enjoy. Challenge Ready? number 3. Apple without the skin. <laughs> okay. So one, two, three. That's actually really nice. Really? Mm. That's great news. Easy to hike out. Yeah. Well done. So about an eight. Yeah. What about yourself? Apples. Ten. Ten. If I cut them up in a little bowl and put them in with a little fork, you would eat them. Yeah. Because mm. I think that's what I'm going to do. Very well done. Proud of you there. Thank you. See you later. Thank you very much. I've kind of looked at a lot of things in my life that need changing um, and definitely food has been up there to change for him and myself. I now need to really be the one to show him the way really and, and be more of an advocate for eating the fruit. Ruth isn't alone in showing signs of embracing Mr Drew's changes. No, no, please. Not why you use words. It's horrible. Come on. You're not having coke? Please. Please. You're not having coke? Why? I will go down and get you a drink of squash, water or milk. I can't drink squash! Fine, then it's water or milk then, isn't it? I don't like milk! <laughs> well, you just made your choice, it's water. <laughs> <laughs> It's a brand new morning, but it's the same old clock. Oh yeah, it's after nine. Shit. But at least he's making it to lessons. What's your plans for today, Max? Do nothing, do nothing, do nothing, do nothing. Did I mention do nothing? Today's session, we are going to be writing stories. Today's first class is English with Mr Grist. What do we need? If he's going to speak, what do we need? What punctuation? Speech marks. Perfect. And true to his word, Maxar is doing nothing. Max. Let's have a chat, mate, yeah? In fact, since arriving at summer school, he's struggled to make it through an entire class. I think we could finish off the lesson, couldn't we? Despite trying their hardest to persuade Max to stay in lessons... What I want you to do is I want you to walk through that door, right? Go in, sit down, take part in the lesson and show people what you're made of. So far, Mr Drew and the teachers have had little success. <laughs> 11-year-old Max lives in Bristol with full-time mum Heidi and sister Jasmine. So what happened at um, school today? Stuff. Yeah, so what, what was the... Stuff. Max's biggest problem in school. He hates going there, he can't wait to come home. He doesn't see the point. Nothing's fun about school. School is boring, unnecessary and boring. 
Max first got excluded, I think, when he was about five because he was hyperactive. He couldn't sit still. He would fight with other children and get frustrated and angry. Hello. By the time he was 10, Max had been permanently excluded from primary school. It isn't one thing that gets you kicked out of school. It's like a whole load of things. Max has spent the last 12 months in a pupil referral unit, but Heidi's managed to secure him a place at a mainstream secondary. I've done everything I can to get Max into a senior school, a really good senior school, and I really don't want him to mess it up. Max. What? You can't disengage from everything and not take part. You can't, OK? Why am I meant to care? Because... I don't believe you don't care. I believe you do care. Unfortunately, oh, I don't really want to hear the language, do I? I don't so, care. Well, then go away. No, because I want to have a conversation with you and. I, well, you I don't. Well, you haven't been to lessons all day, Max, so. I don't care. Max concerns me the most out of all the boys at the moment. For someone like Max to seed in a mainstream school is hard, but it's not impossible. He's not going to change his behaviour overnight, but that doesn't mean that we can't get in a position where he's a better place to start secondary in September. With Max's situation weighing on his mind, Mr Drew raises the matter at the next staff meeting. We do need to talk or think about kids not attending lessons. I've had a very interesting conversation with Max. Do you think part of the problem, particularly with Max R, is that he would infinitely prefer to be in a one-to-one -one with Mark or Tracy or me or whoever rather than in a lesson, which makes him feel uncomfortable. OK, does he need, then, effectively, somebody to go into the lesson with him and to sit with him in the lesson for, the whole, for, for that day? Yeah, maybe that's... Yeah, maybe, I, I so that's, that's the halfway try. house. That's, that's the halfway house. From now on, each teacher will act as a personal mentor to one or two individual pupils. And one of their jobs will be making sure the kids turn up to the lessons. Ben? I say Clark. Oh. oh. Come yeah. on. Dom? Tom, to Tom, Tom, Tom. Yeah, I like Tom. Put, put me down for my Tom. Right, okay, good. Spider. We are operating in a circumstance that isn't a standard school circumstance. We've got a group of children you wouldn't normally have together in that situation. And actually, as each day goes by, based on what everyone observed and does, we will continue to look at each child and continue to change as we need to. With the new mentor policy now in place, Miss Skinner accompanies Max straight to the next lesson, Science, with Mr Vidler. What can you tell me about that flame? That's not a safe flame. Oh, key words. That's Excellent. Not a safe flame. That's a really hot flame. That's not a safety flame. And this time, Max is going nowhere. So if you hold that in the flame, what colour is it burning? Red. Brilliant. Take it out. What happens to the stick? It's on fire. Yeah. So what do we do with it when it's on fire? We put it in the water. OK. Max R was a star today. Not only did he stay in with the lesson, but he also interacted with the lesson. He helped out loads. So he was good. He was excited about that, which was lovely. My target was to stay in this lesson for five minutes. I start staying in the lesson for all the lesson. Some days you can strive all day long for a smile or you can strive all day long and your reward at the end of it is that you see somebody get something. That is amazing. Today's certificate. To encourage hard work and good behaviour, Mr Drew and the teachers hand out certificates each day to boys who've done particularly well. Our science star. Who is your science star, sir, and why? Well, I think the person who was most helpful throughout that lesson was actually uh, Max. Well done, Max. It's very easy with children to think of the idea of lots of steps forward, some steps back. Sometimes you take three forward and you take five back. But actually, in general, you keep going forward. You will keep focusing on the positives, keep praising for what they've done, helping them to understand and learn that when they get it right, that rewards and success comes. It's a new day at summer school, and Mr Drew has a surprise announcement for the families. The weather is lovely. We aren't far from the sea. I want us to be able to go on what will be our first school trip. Good old day out at the seaside, OK? A bit of a walk, some ice cream, some time on the beach, possibly a bit of fish and chips. 
the day promises to be no picnic for the teachers. Unfortunately, it is the case that some of these boys will be removed from school trips due to their behaviour in school. And some people might well say that their behaviour here has shown they don't deserve to take part in it. I absolutely refute that. For our boys, this is what they need. It will help them to improve and they will gain loads from it. So we will get them taking part in school trips and it will help them to do better. The trip's yet to get underway, but already Clark is testing Mr Drew's patience. You with your hoodie over your knees, I expect you to take the hoodie off and behave properly. Thank you. I don't want you to put your feet up on the seat. I want you to sit with your feet on the floor. Safety on trips, gentlemen, safety on trips is of vital importance. There are a number of things when you go to the seaside that could be a potential danger. You need to put your hand down and not interrupt me. Put your hand down. You need to put your hand down. You need to start making the right decisions at the moment. Oh, I want to OK. Safety on trips. No, hand down. I am not discussing it. I'll be really simple with you, Clark. You are getting closer and closer to me refusing to take you. Just so you're absolutely crystal clear. All right, I'll go outside. I'm going to try and ask a question and no one answers it. Could you possibly go and talk to him outside, Mr Vidler, please? Sometimes, so he doesn't explain something someone wants to know, then when they try to ask it, he says, oh, I don't want to know. If there was a question you need the answer to, you can wait until the end of that, and then... If Sir hasn't got the answer for you, you can ask me, can't you? Because I'm your mentor. Him. Go on, him. Is there um, any rock pools down there? As far as I'm aware, it's not a rocky beach. Because I know what you mean, rock pools are absolutely awesome. So all that is, is you showing a bit of patience. Yeah? Because I know for a fact that this is the sort of trip that you'll be brilliant on. Clark, if I can say to Sir when we go back in, that I trust you because you've said to me that you're going to do the right thing with me today, then I think we can save this trip for you, because I'd like to. Can I trust you today? Look me in the eye and tell me I can trust you today. You can trust us. Really? Yeah. Gentlemen, let's go, please. Yeah. You're yeah, right. What? If you talk to anyone about their school days, they will tell you that they remember the exciting trip to somewhere. I have no doubt that some things will happen during the day which will cause me to be concerned and worried. I have no doubt somebody will fall in the sea, somebody will do the wrong thing, somebody will need to be challenged. But, yeah, I love going on school trips with kids. It's a really good thing to do. It helps with relationships, it helps with bonding, and you know you are building lifetime memories for kids that they will take in a positive way. Boys hit the beach, famous for its fossils, and the hunt is on. I'm looking for the shark too. Yeah! There goes shark tooth! After starting the day on the wrong foot, Clark is in his element. Well, I found a crab! Here. He's all over the place with his fossils, he's looking at seaweed, he's looking at everything. And he hasn't been perfect today, but fine, you know, we're sorted, we're back on track again. If we could create a curriculum for someone like Clark where every single thing took place outside, it would be good, but the world doesn't work like that. I really wanted to find a shark tooth, but I can't find one. So far, so good. But no school trip would be complete without at least one act of rebellion. You are spending the first five minutes standing next to me if you want any time in there. You are not being rude to members of the public while leaning over the balcony. You're not doing it. When we were stood out there just outside the coach, Tom waved to a boy who was on the beach. Tom got his attention and then Tom made a wanker sign at him. So everyone else has got 40 minutes. Tom missed his first five minutes. Short, sharp, very quick. Point made. You weren't very nice to those people, OK? Yeah? And if we're not nice to people, then there's a price to pay, yeah? But you have accepted that. You've waited five minutes. I know that means the others have got one more go than you, Tom. But, Tom, look at me. You weren't very nice to people, were you? So is that fair enough? Shake my hand. You may now go, because your time is up. Off you go. Today is 
the dodgems and um, the fossil findings. No disasters. It's quite a lot of freedom today. So, no one's died. So it's good news. I'm sick in a minute, aren't I? I'm just convinced we couldn't have done that a week and a half ago. I'm not saying everything was perfect, I'm not saying they all did the right thing all the time, but actually, we've ended with that 45 minutes in the arcades, on the dodgems, doing the stuff. They've been able to have lots of fun. I just think boys deserve to have time out and do things. And actually, yeah, there's been wobbles, there's been issues. These kids aren't easy, but actually, I'm pretty pleased with how it's gone. They, they haven't let us down. The families are halfway through summer school, and Mr Drew has given the order to fire up the barbecue. Yeah, Summon my truck car, no, bounce! No, I stole my gun. They've had their ups and they've had their downs. I'm really excited about what the next two weeks will bring. At first it was really hard, but I think once you learn to let go and you know that you're here for help, and I'm going to be a better mum after this, aren't I? What about the effects? Uh, there's a few bits of bobs here that I don't like. What I think about Mr Drew is, is sometimes when he's in a bad mood, I don't like him, but sometimes when he's in a good mood, um, he... I like him, but when he pisses me off, I really hate his guts. And Mr Drew isn't the only teacher to have made a strong impression. I tell you what, it must have took something for you, being a, an avid Liverpool fan, to actually draw the Everton badge like that. As his mentor, Mr Volante has been working closely with Tom, who's come up with his own way of saying thank you. For me, the most touching thing about it is the words to say thank you, OK, and you'd appreciate it, all the support that I've given you so far. So thank you very much. Right, because I'm going to take that home to my wife and to my daughter and just say, look, I think I've made an impression on this young man. Touch. Good out. This is a group of children with a set of complex problems where the moving forward doesn't come in a very singular fashion. It's not a straight line. I feel we're probably about where we should be. There's some boys who are actually further on than I thought there would be, and there's some boys who aren't. But overall, on balance, thinking about the parent situation as well, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good.